Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, your journey, our passion. And by Dow Automotive Systems, improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. Hello and welcome to AutoLine Daily. I'm Peter DiLorenzo, the auto extremist, filling in for John once again. In the second half of the show, we've got more design insight from Jim Hall. But first, the news. Tesla posted its second quarter earnings, and while they weren't as strong as last quarter, they beat Wall Street expectations, and that sent the company's stock up even further. Reuters reports the company hit a high of $153 per share and closed at $134. The company sold over 5,000 Model S's in North America in the second quarter. However, its total revenues and net profit dropped from the previous quarter. But Tesla is in a strong financial position because it's paid off its government loans and it has nearly $750 million in cash. We'll be talking about Tesla tonight on AutoLine After Hours. It looks like some automakers are figuring out the new small overlap front crash test from the IIHS. So far, only a handful of vehicles have passed the test in which 25% of a car's front end on the driver's side strikes a 5-foot tall barrier at 40 miles per hour. The agency just released results for 12 small cars it evaluated and half of them received good or acceptable ratings. The two and four-door versions of the Civic were rated good while the Dodge Dart, Ford Focus, Hyundai Elantra and Scion TC earned acceptable ratings. Hyundai just introduced its new i10 small car before it makes its official debut at the Frankfurt Motor Show next month. The five-door hatch is longer, wider, and lower than the outgoing model, which debuted five years ago in Europe. It's built on an all-new platform, which incorporates the company's fluidic sculpture design that's now featured on most of its models. The new i10 was designed and developed at the company's tech center in Germany. Production starts this September in Turkey the first Hyundai A-segment car to be built in the region. This just in, the auto manufacturers need to pick another letter in the alphabet. There are too many I cars floating around. And speaking of Frankfurt, Infiniti released this teaser of the Q30 concept that will debut at the show. There aren't a whole lot of details, but the company says it showcases the brand's vision of a future compact design. We reported back in June that it was likely at least one automaker would use Gorilla Glass in a vehicle by the end of the year, and now we have that company. BMW will use it for the rear window in its i8 plug-in hybrid sports car. Gorilla Glass, which is mainly used in smartphones, consists of acoustic sheeting that's sandwiched between two pieces of glass. It is quieter and stronger, as well as 50% lighter compared to conventional laminated glass. The BMW i8 will make its debut at the Frankfurt Motor Show next month and will hit showrooms in 2014. Back when the Scion brand was just beginning, its management said that it wanted a small dealer footprint, but as demand for the brand's vehicles skyrocketed, so did its dealer network. But now, that demand has slowed. Ward's Auto reports the brand has too many dealerships and will get rid of some of them. Scion currently has 1,000 U.S. dealers which is only 200 less than the total number of Toyota dealers. Analysts say it should really have something like 350 to 500. Coming up, there's one design element that everyone seems to think a luxury car needs. Jim Hall cries fall after the break. Dow Automotive Systems, driving solutions in automotive, commercial transportation, and aftermarket with innovative products like Betamate structural adhesives. Lighter, stronger, safer. DowBetamate.com. Have you ever heard the phrase dash to axle and thought someone was chasing a German guy? Jim Hall from 2953 Analytics clears up the confusion today as we turn to the basic design terms section of the design handbook. You may have heard the term dash to axle and been unclear as to its meaning. The expression describes the distance from the front axle to the base of the A-pillar on a car. The earliest automobiles were actually just horse-drawn carriages with an explosive engine-style device replacing the sometimes explosive equine slave animal. For safety, the engines in these early motor vehicles were positioned under the occupants to assure their quick and near painless deaths in the event of an engine failure. When the wheels moved up front and the cabin shifted to behind the engine, the dash-axle relationship was actually created. 
By the middle of the 1920s, most popularly priced family cars were powered by inline four-cylinder engines. But as engines increased in both size and cylinder count to be inline sixes, eights, eventually V8s, V12s, and even V16s, the larger power plants necessitated greater dash to axle measurements. By the middle of the 1930s, a long dash to axle was part of the architecture of any luxury or performance car. After World War II, dash to axle was used to differentiate trim lines within the same brand by adding wheelbase ahead of the passenger compartment. It didn't increase the cabin size, but you sure could tell the difference between a Buick Century and Buick Roadmaster. In spite of what many think, initially, front wheel drive actually lengthened the dash to axle measure. Early front wheel drive cars positioned the transaxle ahead of the engine, moving the front wheels even further forward. But in the early 1950s, front drive with the engine placed ahead of the gearbox appeared, and the front wheels began to move closer to the cabin. Transverse front wheel drive, pioneered on the ADO 15, Austin 7, and Morris Mini Minor, appeared in 1959, and it brought the driving wheels virtually into contact with the leading edge of the front doors. Nowadays, a long dash to axle relationship connotes something more than an entry level car. We can thank the BMW 3 Series for that. Just as it was in the 1930s, a long dash to axle telegraphs a certain importance or exclusivity to a car today. This has some people thinking you can't have a serious luxury car or a flagship that doesn't exhibit an extraordinarily long dash to axle relationship, and that's bunk. If you doubt it, just look at the Audi A8 that's based off a of front wheel drive architecture and has a pretty short dash to axle. That car is definitely a range topper. Like most design elements, it's the combination and balance of them that makes a car work visually or not. So that's the straight skinny on dash to axle. For Auto Line Design Handbook, I'm Jim Hall. As always, we welcome your feedback on Design Handbook. Let us know what industry jargon you'd like to find. Just shoot us an email to viewermail at autoline.tv. Before I go, I want to remind you to tune in for tonight's episode of Autoline After Hours. I will be joined by my fellow colleagues Gary Vassalash from Automotive Design and Production, Todd Lassa from Automobile, and the man who knew too much, Jim Hall, for some of the best insider discussion in the auto industry. That's tonight at 6 p.m. on Autoline.tv. But that's it for today. I'm Peter DiLorenzo, the auto extremist. Thanks for watching. Have a great day, and I will see you tonight.